Seed saving is a practice that has been part of human culture since the dawn of agriculture. Seed saving is the reason that we have agriculture, that people figured out how to co-evolve with plants and to learn the life cycles of plants and to collect the seeds to pass on to the next generation so that if people were moving, the plants, the foods that they depended on could move with them. So in many ways, seed saving is the reason we have agriculture and agriculture is the basis of culture, of, of forming societies. And so seed saving is really a cultural basis, cultural foundation as well. Uh, but along the way, we've lost many of those skills because of the way that seeds and farming and the seed industry has changed over time. So the modern context of seed saving is very different than when we look 4,000 years ago or even 100 years ago. It's that we've been losing all of these varieties. We've been losing the genetic diversity. We've been losing the cultural stories that come with the seeds. And so we need to regain our skills and our knowledge of saving seeds in order to regain that understanding of the cultural complexity of seeds. But when we start looking more closely at where seeds came from, we're really looking at indigenous communities and thousands and thousands of years of co-evolution with those peoples in a certain place uh, over time to create these really interesting varieties. And those varieties have all kinds of meanings for those communities. It could be something that's about a food way, uh, a specific recipe or a certain food they depended on, but there's, there's sacred seeds that have to do with ceremonies. Uh, there's seeds that are attached to myths or attached to creation stories. And so seeds have much more meaning when we think of them as embedded in those communities. So when we're with this project, what we're really thinking about is not the commercialization of seeds, not the commodity that these seeds will produce, but the cultural impact and that without these seeds, these cultures disappear as well. This project is really about valuing seeds in that cultural context and in that spiritual context and saying it's not just about growing stuff to sell stuff, it's about taking care of the indigenous communities that are here and being partners with them so that their culture doesn't disappear. So what was really cool is when Bob approached me about this and saying he was interested in having a Native American seed sanctuary. And at the same time, I had been talking to Rowan uh, about her activities where she was going and visiting elders from the different communities, different tribes, collecting the seeds that were in danger of disappearing. And then what she's trying to do is figure out who can grow these out so that there's an increased seed stock so we can bring them back to the tribes maybe even when necessary, teach the seed saving skills to people at the tribes so that they can have seed sovereignty with their own seeds. So we have the Mohawk red red corn, which is just beautiful. Uh, we have the uh, buckskin brown beans, which is a dry bean. This is Onondaga sunflowers. And then also growing in the Three Sisters garden there, we have a Canadian crookneck squash, which has a small bulb at the bottom and a big curved neck. Uh, and then we have Buffalo Creek squash, which is a big blocky uh, winter squash. This isn't something that's really, you know, not a lot of people are out there doing this kind of work. Rowan White is one of the few people really focused on collecting these varieties in danger of disappearing and finding the right homes. Uh, and that's part of why we decided to call it a Native American seed sanctuary, because a sanctuary is a place of refuge. It's a place where whatever resides there is protected. So we're protecting it genetically. We're also protecting the stories and the culture that come with the seeds. Uh, and so it's a really rare opportunity um, to find the resources and the location and the seeds and have that all come together in one project like this. What I'm excited about is thinking about what can we do next year and what can we do the year after that.